Welcome to another edition of MCAT Strategy. Today we will be discussing changes to the MCAT exam for 2013 and 2014 and we will be discussing some of the implications of those changes. The biggest change to the MCAT exam in 2013 and 2014 is that the writing sample will no longer be a section for the exam. Here is the official AAMC statement from their website and I will include a link to the website so that you can view the statement for yourself. It says, if you plan to take the MCAT exam in 2013 or 2014, please note that the writing sample section will no longer be part of the exam. In its place, a voluntary unscored trial section will be added to the MCAT exam starting in January 2013 and we will be discussing the trial section a little bit later. So the first question that may arise is why was this change made? The purpose of the MCAT exam is to test various aptitudes and background knowledge of the test writer in order to assess whether they would be a good candidate for further medical studies and in order to predict their performance as a future physician. The performance of a test writer on the biological and physical sciences is predictive of their success in the first two years of medical school. The verbal reasoning section, on the other hand, is more predictive of uh, performance of a medical student and the later stages of, of their medical training. However, studies have shown that there is no correlation between performance on the writing sample and performance as a medical student and as a future physician, and this is the primary reason why the writing sample is being scrapped. This has been known for a while and is the, one of the main reasons why in most U.S. schools the writing sample has little bearing on the admissions process. In contrast, a lot of Canadian schools currently look at the writing sample and use it as one of the criteria in the admissions process. I wanted to discuss the trial section a little bit further. It will follow the three main sections, physical sciences, verbal reasoning, and biological sciences, and the trial section will consist of 32 questions. The trial section will reflect test content that is being added to the MCAT 2015 exam and includes questions related to psychology, sociology, and biochemistry. It is important to note that the scores on this section will not be reported for this section, so you do not need to worry about your performance. My advice for the trial section is absolutely do not skip the trial section. The trial section follows the three sections of the exam that actually count and after finishing the MCAT exam you may feel like you want to skip the voluntary and optional trial section because you may feel tired or you may feel drained. However, there are two good reasons why you should not skip the trial section. The first reason is that knowledge is power. The MCAT exam is obviously very challenging and in the future, if you do need to write the MCAT 2015 exam, having exposure to trial questions that reflect the actual content, a new content of the 2015 exam, will be advantageous to you. Furthermore, the AAMC has said that examinees who volunteer to participate in the trial section and put forth a good faith effort will be compensated. I don't know how this is going to work or how much the compensation is, but this is just a bonus and I know that most of my viewers are probably students with a lot of student debt and we could all use a little extra cash. Now I want to move on to talk about some of the implications of the elimination of the writing sample. The MCAT exam scores are percentile based which means that your score is dependent on the performance of the other test writers. With the elimination of the writing sample section, most of the test writers will have more preparation time for the other three main sections. And because students will have more time to prepare for the other three sections and because the MCAT scores are percentile based, this increases the difficulty and importance of the three main sections. Furthermore, the elimination of the writing sample will have implications for admissions. 
admissions committees will need to be able to compare students with older MCAT scores that have a writing sample score reported and new MCAT scores that will not have a writing sample score reported. So for schools that actually utilize the writing sample as part of their admissions criteria, they may need to eliminate uh, looking at the writing sample score or they may need to reduce its impact and its importance in order to have a fair admissions process between uh, MCAT writers who wrote the MCAT with the writing sample and the MCAT writers who wrote the MCAT exam without the writing sample. So with the elimination of the writing sample, there will be a greater emphasis on the three primary sections of the MCAT exam. Again, with the reduction in the total number of test sections in the MCAT exam, writers will have more time in their preparation to study for the remaining sections, and this increases the importance of the, of the verbal reasoning, physical sciences, and biological sciences sections, and increases the difficulty of these sections. So this means that weaknesses in a particular section are going to be magnified because if the difficulty of the questions remains the same and people have more time in their preparation to devote to the three sections, then it will be harder to perform well relative to the other test writers. This brings me to my next point about verbal reasoning. Most MCAT writers come from a science-based background the verbal reasoning section has always been an important differentiating factor because many science students struggle with it. With only three sections on the MCAT exam in 2013 and 2014, the verbal reasoning section becomes an even more important section in terms of separating test writers. So these observations lead me to an important piece of advice, to work on your weaknesses. One analogy that we can all understand is that in classes, it is much easier to improve grades from 60% to 70% compared to improving from 90% to 100%. In other words, your efforts in a particular section yield diminishing returns over time. One of the dangerous tendencies for students preparing for the MCAT exam is to work on their strengths and neglect their weaknesses in order to protect their self-esteem. This tendency arises because we tend to want to do things that we are good at and we tend to want to avoid things that we are not good at because if we don't do well, then it makes us feel bad. However, this tendency is a trap and it should be absolutely avoided. Remember to focus on your weaknesses because focusing on your weaknesses is the most effective and efficient way of improving your MCAT score. So the MCAT exam is moving through a transition period from the old MCAT exam as we know it to the new revamped MCAT 2015. I'm going to be doing a, another video in the future covering the changes that are coming to the MCAT 2015 exam. There are going to be lots of changes to the MCAT 2015 exam and it is a large overhaul. These changes are going to bring uncertainty to both the MCAT and medical school admissions because with a new test and new content, there is always a lot of uncertainty and the preparation materials are going to be a lot less refined. Furthermore, it's going to bring uncertainty to the medical school admissions process because schools will need to decide how best to compare old MCAT scores to new MCAT scores and this could potentially get messy. So what I would advise students to do is to do their best to write the MCAT exam in 2013 and 2014 and have it finished uh, before all of the changes come in 2015. There is an old saying that the enemy you know is safer than the one you don't. Thank you for watching today's video. Any discussions, suggestions or comments are welcome. Please click the like button below to support this channel and please subscribe to my channel to receive updates whenever I release a new video.